Welcome to Verify This, the show that answers your questions and separates fact from fiction, so you can determine whether viral claims online are true or false. I'm your host, Brandon Lewis. Our team is located across the country, working hard to get verified answers to your questions about this week's trending stories, including, will taxpayers foot the bill to cover account holders after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank? Did an SVB employee also work at Lehman Brothers, which infamously collapsed in 2008? Do retired members of Congress collect a pension? Is there a House bill to raise the age to collect full Social Security to 70? And if you own a timeshare, we'll tell you what you need to know to avoid a scammer posing as a potential buyer. Stick with us for the next 15 minutes or so, and we'll reveal how we uncovered the truth. We'll show you our sources and helpful context so you can avoid sharing potentially harmful misinformation. Last week, federal regulators shut down Silicon Valley Bank. It's the largest bank failure since the 2008 financial crisis. But the federal government says everyone with money at the bank will get it back. So we looked into who's paying to cover the deposits at the bank. Just days after Silicon Valley Bank was shut down by regulators, the government announced all of the bank's customers would get their money back. This prompted questions about whether taxpayers would foot the bill. So. Let's verify. Our sources are the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and the Federal Reserve. The FDIC provides insurance to banks. This means even if a bank were to go under, like SVB, each account holder's money is protected, up to $250,000. The problem is SVB catered to businesses, many of which had millions in their accounts, well above the FDIC insurance limit. On Sunday, the Federal Reserve announced it will protect all money for account holders regardless of their balance, using funds from the Deposit Insurance Fund. This is a program that's funded by fees paid by banks and interest earned on government bonds, not taxpayers. So, no, taxpayer money is not being used to cover deposits at SVB. The FDIC says it will require banks to pay a special assessment to help recover any losses. We always enjoy answering your questions, so if there's something you want us to verify, then grab your phone and email us at questions at verifythis.com. If you send your question to us as a video, then you could be featured in next week's show. After the collapse of SVB, many people on social media were claiming an executive at the bank previously worked at another financial institution that notoriously went under. So we asked Adian Day Till to dig into it. On Friday, U.S. regulators closed Silicon Valley Bank, or SVB. It's the second largest bank failure in U.S. history, and it's bringing back memories of the 2008 financial crisis, triggered by the collapse of major banks and financial institutions like Lehman Brothers. On Twitter, some people are linking an apparent executive at SVB to Lehman Brothers. The Post says Joseph Gentile is the chief administrative officer at SVB and was also the CFO of Lehman Brothers Global Investment Bank when it collapsed. But is that true? Let's verify. Our sources are SVB Securities, Lehman Brothers bankruptcy filings, and broker check. Gentile is the chief administrative officer of SVB Securities and has been since 2007. SVB Securities is an investment bank. It's a different arm of the company and wasn't part of the collapse. On Saturday, SVB Securities CEO Jeff Leerink told company stakeholders, we want to assure you that SVB Securities is financially stable and will continue to operate as usual. Gentile's bio on the SVB Securities website says he was previously the chief financial officer at Lehman Brothers Global Investment Bank, which Verify confirmed with Lehman's bankruptcy filings. But Gentile didn't work at Lehman Brothers when it collapsed. Lehman filed for bankruptcy in September 2008, but Gentile left the company more than a year earlier, according to BrokerCheck. So we can verify that Joseph Gentile is currently an executive at SVB Securities, which is a company owned by SVB's parent company, not the bank that collapsed. And he was an executive at Lehman Brothers, but he wasn't with Lehman Brothers when it collapsed. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Till. <laughs> That sound means it's time for this week's first Did You Know, where we feature one relatively unknown interesting fact that we, of course, verified. Speaking of the FDIC, did you know the agency has been around since the Great Depression? It's true. The FDIC was established in 1933 to protect up to $2,500 per account. The coverage limit was increased several times and today ensures up to $250,000 in nearly all checking, savings, money market, certificates of deposit, cashier's checks, and money orders at nearly every American bank. 
If you use a credit union, then your money is similarly insured by the National Credit Union Association. If you like that Did You Know, sign up for our daily newsletter. It has a new Did You Know every day, as well as three fast facts and more of our most recent stories. To sign up, go to verifythis.com slash email. We love when we can answer your questions, and several of you emailed and texted us about whether members of Congress get pensions when they retire. So Casey Decker set out to look into what they're entitled to. Several Verify viewers reached out to us with questions about what kinds of benefits members of Congress can receive, especially when it comes to retirement. So let's verify. Can members of Congress collect a pension? Our sources are the Congressional Research Service, the U.S. Office of Personnel Management, and the U.S. Government Accountability Office. Members of Congress are covered by the same plan as all other civilian workers in the federal government, the Federal Employees Retirement System. The plan provides a pension to anyone who served at least five years. Retired members who meet that requirement can start collecting a monthly check when they turn 62. So yes, members of Congress can collect a pension if they've served five years. How much money they receive is determined based on their salary and how many years they served. A member serving the minimum five years at the current salary would get just under 15 grand per year. A report in 2018 found that the average member on this plan was receiving about 41 grand a year. And there's also a cap on how high the pension can go. It can't be more than 80% of their salary while in office. Like with most pensions, this one is partially funded by contributions from the members while they're in office. Depending on when they were elected, between 1 and 5% of their paycheck gets deducted. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. We answered even more of your questions about retirement programs on our website. To find all of our stories, just go to verifythis.com and search for the topic you're interested in, like Medicare or Social Security, to find all of our stories. Even if you don't get a pension, most Americans are entitled to receive Social Security when they retire. Currently, you need to be 67 to collect your full benefits. But a viral meme claims more than 150 Republican members of Congress recently voted to raise the age to 70. So we looked into whether that's true. A viral social media post claims more than 150 Republican members of Congress recently voted to raise the age to collect full Social Security from 67 to 70. The claim was spread across several platforms, including one tweet with nearly a million views. So let's verify. Our sources are the Republican Study Committee, the RSC's Blueprint to Save America plan, and the Congressional Record. Some versions of the post list the 156 representatives who supposedly voted for the plan. We checked the Congressional Record and couldn't find any bills that the current House has voted on involving cuts or raising the age of Social Security to 70. So where did this claim come from? We traced it back to a budget proposal that was released last year by the Republican Study Committee, a caucus of 156 House Republicans. Their Blueprint to Save America plan suggests gradually increasing the retirement age to 70 to help keep Social Security solvent. However, the plan was never turned into a bill and was never voted on by the House. It's also not clear whether it's supported by every member of the RSC. The plan was drafted by a task force of just 16 representatives. So, no, 156 Republicans did not vote to raise the retirement age for Social Security to 70. Have you subscribed to our YouTube page yet? Get started by clicking on the Shorts tab on the Verify This YouTube page to check out our latest posts. Like this one, where we explain why, despite multiple attempts in Congress, we're still springing forward and falling back for daylight saving time. Spring begins on Monday, but you're probably already thinking about summer vacations. For some people, that means using their timeshares. But the federal government is warning that scammers are looking to take advantage of people when it's time to sell theirs. So we explain how you can avoid becoming a victim. Around 1 in 10 households own a timeshare. The average price is more than $24,000 plus annual fees. Sometimes there comes a point when people want to sell, but according to Sell My Timeshare Now, owners may only get a third of what they originally paid in the resale market. So it's understandable why people might be desperate to take what seems like a good offer. The Biden administration recently penalized eight Mexican companies that it says were defrauding American timeshare owners and funneling the profits to a drug cartel. But these scams existed long before the recent ties to organized crime. So we're going to show you how these scams work to help keep your money safe using these sources. Here's how the scam works. 
timeshare owners receive an unsolicited call or email from a broker who claims to represent someone who wants to buy their timeshare for an unusually large price. The broker then asks for money to cover fees or taxes. They might even promise the buyer will reimburse you once the sale is completed. Once the money is sent, the broker skips away and you find out the offer was fake. If you do get a suspicious offer, then contact your timeshare company directly. Be especially cautious with any offer that requires you to pay money up front. And consider hiring your own real estate attorney to review the transaction. We have time for one last did you know before we go. March Madness is underway and like many of you, my bracket is already busted. But don't feel too bad because did you know there's no record of anyone ever filling out the perfect bracket? It's true. The closest anyone has verifiably come was in 2019, when an Ohio man correctly predicted the first 49 games. A perfect bracket would require you to select the correct winner in 63 games. Researchers say the odds of picking a perfect bracket vary each year because sometimes there are clear favorites, while in other years, the games are more evenly matched. In general, your odds of filling out the perfect bracket are between one and one to about seven billion. To put that into perspective, you are much more likely to win the Powerball jackpot. And there's also no verifiable record of a perfect women's bracket either. On behalf of our entire Verify team, I hope you enjoyed our show and learned something new today. I'm your host, Brandon Lewis. If you're craving even more fact checks, head on over to the Verify This YouTube page. That's where you can find bingeable fast facts, extended interviews with our experts, and lots and lots of fact checks. While you're there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. As always, if there's something else you want us to verify, just send us a text at 202-410-8808. If you send your question to us as a video, you could end up at the show. Our number is still on your screen, so lock us in, and we'll see you back here next week with more answers to your questions verified. For more episodes of Verify This, go to our video on demand. Click on shows at the top of your screen. There, you'll find past episodes of Verify This, plus other shows on demand.